Today's readings explain how we should practice true and dynamic Christian discipleship. In our first reading, we hear in Jeremiah, his name becomes like a burning fire in my heart. And God pursues us just as he pursued Jeremiah. When Jeremiah began his ministry, the people of Israel had become so hardened by the numbing effects of their sinful ways that they no longer believed God, nor did they fear him. Jeremiah would preach for 40 years, and not once did he see any real success in changing or softening the hearts and minds of his stubborn, idolatrous people. Jeremiah tried to keep a people who lived in an atmosphere of political intrigue and backsliding faithful to God. But it seemed like he was speaking to a brick wall, to people who simply didn't care about God or their religion. And so judged by the world's standards, Jeremiah's life was a failure. He was regarded as a traitor by his own people because he, as God's mouthpiece, had to foretell the dire results that would follow from their plan of revolt against the mighty power of Babylon. And so his people despised him as a prophet of doom, and this further depressed him, and he complained bitterly to God. But after submitting to God, eventually Jeremiah, who was a very timid man, who did not know how to speak, became transformed. We too over assumed that our mission must be easy at all times, but unfortunately it's not always true. The reality is faithfulness to God at times brings us trials, disappointments, and even sufferings. In today's gospel, we see the irony of life. The same Peter who proclaimed that Christ is the Messiah last week is today rebuked to Satan. Christ simply rebuked him for being an obstacle to his mission. But in fairness, for Peter and the other apostles, the interpretation which was common in their day, as taught by the scribes and the Pharisees, was that the Messiah, the Christ, who was coming, would be a great temporal prince, like Solomon, only greater. He would come with a sword in his hand and crush the hated Romans who occupied their land, and restore Israel to its greatness. And indeed, parts of prophetic scriptures speak of the Messiah then to come as a conqueror. Peter had to be pretty puffed up after last week's gospel. He's the rock. He has the keys to the kingdom, so to speak, in his tunic. Life is great. Imagine the crowds that the Lord will draw to himself once they know he is the Messiah. But now he hears Jesus speak of going to Jerusalem where he would suffer greatly and die and be raised on the last day. Well, no one at that time equated Isaiah 53, the Lord's suffering servant, to what they expected of the Messiah. He is spoken of as a rejected of men, an outcast, persecuted, spat upon, pierced, and slain. And so I imagine most of us at that time would not have thought of a savior as one who was going to be crucified either. And so Peter, the devout follower of, of our Lord, the Lord whom he loved so dearly, had to dissuade his master from this notion of suffering and dying. What a scandal, the Messiah on a cross. And he probably could not stand the thought of the apostles suffering and dying either since they were his disciples. God forbid it, Lord, this must never happen to you. And Peter strongly rebuked, get behind me, Satan. And so the great rock on which Christ would build his church is now a stumbling block. For as Satan tempted Jesus in the desert, so now Peter tempts Jesus to abandon his mission. St. Paul tells us today, not to be conformed to the pattern of the world. The pattern of the present world, as it was for Jeremiah, has nothing to offer us 
except the distraction of sin, worldliness, consumerism, materialism, sensualism, and moral tendency, and a lifestyle that seems to be a lifestyle without God. We as Christians are expected to be nonconformist, countercultural. In order to be an effective agent of change and conversion, we cannot simply conform to the environment. We have to stand firmly for our Christian principles, even if it means going against the tide of the predominant culture. And indeed, in our country today, that may even mean physical suffering and death. Jesus states further today, whoever wishes to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. For, most, for the most part in our country, we have had the freedom of religion without the threat of physical violence. We may have been mocked and ridiculed for our beliefs, but not physically threatened. But throughout the world, today, especially Catholics, are being martyred for their faith. And yet they would suffer, suffer even death, rather than deny God. Today in our country, we witness the attacks on our churches. Not too long ago, an individual drove his car into a Catholic church just prior to Mass and started the church on fire. We witnessed the vicious attacks on innocent people dining in restaurants this week in D.C., attacks on those leaving the White House Thursday evening. And so we're living in a culture of violence that seems to be getting worse every day. Jesus says, take up your cross and follow me. Well, we often equate take up your cross with whatever physical suffering that occurs in our individual lives. Cancer, a broken marriage, the loss of a loved one, natural disasters, and so on. And indeed, these are crosses which we bear. But the very thought of having to suffer physically, even death, just for practicing our faith has probably never occurred to us. And so the question is, are we ready to take up that cross? It's fitting that today is the memorial of the heading of St. John the Baptist, martyred for his call to the people of Israel to repentance, including the king himself. Many people ask these days if the current events we're experiencing, hurricanes, fires, swarms of locusts, the pandemic, violence, and so on, are the signs of the end of times. Well, I can't answer that question, only God can. But whether it is or it is not, we should always be prepared for our end of life in this world. That's a reality to all of us. We all understand that. And our promise is that there is the afterlife. And so we should always be prepared for that afterlife through the sacrament of penance, frequent reception of Holy Communion, and following the commandments God has given us. If we do that, we won't live in fear with what's going on in the world today. So frequently we make the sign of the cross, often during the day, our meals, our prayers, and even here at the sacred liturgy of the Mass, blessings and so on. And each sign of the cross is a profession of our faith in Christ crucified, but it's also our profession of faith, our hope in the resurrection. And that's what we have to keep front and foremost in our mind. Cross, our faith, and our hope in what's to be coming in the future. And so don't be afraid of the cross. Embrace the cross and trust in God. For blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad, because great is your reward in heaven. Jeremiah was consumed and burning internally for love of the Lord and the Word. And that's the transformation that should take place in each one of us in the liturgy today. Nourished by His Word, 
nourished by the sacrament of the most holy sacrament of the Eucharist, that indwelling of God within us, that indwelling that will conform us. Then our hearts will burn. And if our hearts are truly burned, then we can stand up to the abuse that we may take and also have the courage to stop up offer our lives and sacrifice and the martyrs do throughout the world today just to come here to Mass. Peter, we look at poor Peter and remember that Peter will deny Jesus three times before his death on the cross. And Peter is not ready to accept his cross until Pentecost. And so he's an example for us. Those of you confirmed have always already been imbued with the power of the Holy Spirit. You should be ready. The heart fire should already be burning. And our youth, hopefully in their confirmation, will be the same. But for all of us, you know, we pray, come Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of thy faithful, and kindle in them the fire of thy love. Amen. <laughs>